I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the board on behalf of my company and colleagues for allowing us to present you today. My name is Addie, and these are my colleagues Roy, Brandon, Natalia, and Martina, and we are here today to discuss the strategic objectives of RSI. So, in order for RSI to meet its strategic goals, our analysis will provide you with a clear understanding of RSI's current situation. We will analyze the strategic options available to the company and we will provide a recommendation to management on the best course of action. So based on our internal findings of the company, we all know that a vision statement of RSI should include a description of what the company aspires to be, whereas the mission statement should describe the company's main purpose, the target market, the value proposition, as well as the company's competitive posture. Based on our findings, we see we have analyzed that both RSI and Lavish's mission and vision appear to be aligned. However, there are some differences that I'd like to point out. For one, Lavish's mission does not mention the environment. Both companies do not include developing a relationship with the community, which is very important in order to build a, in order to build a business. And finally, it appears that both companies have different focuses. RSI is more focused on providing affordable on providing affordable services with health benefits, and Lavish is more, um, is more focused on providing an escape and pampering experience. So, as well as, it, as well, in terms of our internal findings, we have uh, identified some key, some key success factors. For one, um, both companies have convenient, convenient locations and clean facilities. Both companies offer up-to-date and unique services. Um, they are able to just sustain competitive advantage and maintain a good reputation in the community. So, in addition to aligning the company's goals, vision and goals, um, it appears that the shareholder goals and preferences need to be aligned. Currently, there are 10 shareholders in the company, three of which are actively involved in the business. Uh, the implication of this is that um, there could be disagreements in terms of decision making, as well, there could be deadlock in terms of, in terms of voting because of the even number of shareholders. Uh, we've also performed an internal analysis by analyzing, by analyzing the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats of the company, as well as an external analysis, external analysis by examining the political, economical, sociocultural, technical, environmental, and legislative factors impacting RSI. Um, further details are provided in your brochure. Now, I will hand it over to my colleague Roy, who will be um, discussing the financial reporting um, issues impacting RSI. Thank you so much. Thank you, Andy. So in order for RSI to acquire banknotes, uh, the financial statements are required to prepare in accordance with the Canadian Standard for Private Enterprise, known as SB, and also consolidated statements are required as well. So we have identified the following um, consolidated financial statement adjustment. So for both the assets and liability, for, uh, both need to be recognized as fair market value or the acquisition day. The intangibles are required to amortize uh, over uh, the estimated useful life. And for the among 494,000 exceeding identified for uh, asset and liability of leverage, uh, we need to recognize that one the consolidated balance sheet has good value. So in terms of financial ratio analysis, uh, for liquidity, both companies have current and credit ratio less than one, but it's primarily due to uh, the current portion of the long-term debt. And overall, both companies have strong cash flow from operation, so it shouldn't appear to be an issue for liquidity. Uh, for solvency, uh, both companies have strong earnings to cover interest expense, particularly for RSI, uh, the ratio has, uh, has been doubled. And, but the level of debt is high because RSI uh, financed the acquisition of leverage uh, with uh, debt. So for, for profitability, both companies have strong profitability indicator, particularly for RSI, both the profit margin and the return on asset has been tripled over the previous year. So overall, we would think uh, RSI is in a good position to embark on a growth strategy. However, we identified two specific issues in terms of financial performance. The first one is our account receivable collection performance. Uh, on average, RSI takes uh, five days more to collect account receivable, and it's due to the initial 
insurance account. So uh, we suggest the management to examine the insurance billing process to uh, identify the reason. And the other issue is the inventory. Uh, it takes RSI 30 days more to service inventory. So we also recommend uh, uh, management to uh, identify the issue with the man uh, inventory management in 2015. So as you can see on the chart, RSI is heavily leveraged um, so that it could be a potential problem for RSI to borrow money from the bank as the bank requires that component and it's unlikely that it could be a challenge for RSI to meet the requirement. So as an alternative, RSI could have a quite a private loan uh, with room for ne to negotiate terms and requirement. But the downside is RSI may not be able to get up to 15 million, which may require a shareholder to pay out of his pocket to fund the expansion. And now I will pass to Brandon to discuss the first two strategic options. Thank you, Roy. I'm here to discuss two of the options available to the company as we stand today. The first one is consolidating RSI and Lavish together. Some of the pros of this are is that it creates a consistent mandate to create one administration going forward. And this will also consolidate the mission and vision statements going forward as well. Uh, there will create cost savings as duplicate costs between the two companies can be uh, consolidated into one cost, which will reduce the total. Um, there's also a centralized decision-making structure which will streamline the decision-making process going forward. Um, consolidated financial statements will look stronger, which will make it easier to create uh, acquired financing. Um, there's also no additional financing required for this specific option. Some of the cons of this is that it's difficult to join the two different operations as they are very different uh, functionally right now. Um, Lavish also has a bonus system while RSI does not, which will make it tough to bring the two employee bases together without consolidating that into one uh, bonus structure. Um, there are also different accounting policies in place currently which will have to be reconciled so that the consolidated financial statements can be created. And also the different clients, services, and atmospheres of the two companies will make it difficult to join them together as they now uh, service two widely different uh, markets. Um, as you can see here, we Look at, looked at some of the uh, ratios of the last few years. As you can see, consolidating will not change the uh, current ratio at all, but the uh, companies do look quite a bit better on a profit margin basis when they are separated compared to consolidated. And the main reason for this is that uh, there are different policies in place currently, and once these are reconciled to be the same policies, the consolidated financial statements will begin to look more like the individuals on their own. Uh, and then for, for, for strategic option number two, this is the franchising option. Uh, some of the pros of this is that it's consistent with the board mandate for growth. Uh, it allows a company to capture market share effectively by growing quickly. Uh, the reputable brand identity can be established through the franchises, and experienced franchisees can improve the operations of the company by making suggestions from their experience. Uh, some of the cons of this is that franchisees could have different values which would ruin the brand identity. Uh, expansion could be overwhelming and time consuming for management and could create some uh, issues there. Uh, quality locations may not be available, which is a very important factor to this industry as they need foot traffic in their spas to get business. Uh, and uh, screening process for applicants will be very time consuming and costly. And as you can see as well, the startup cost will be $250,000 per, per company or per franchise with an additional $65,000 for first year operating costs. And we've also provided a break-even analysis here, which shows that in the first year, we need to open about eight locations to uh, break even that year. And going forward, we can reduce that down to five locations to cover the operating costs of each location. I will now pass it off to Natalia to discuss the next two options. Thank you, Brandon. Uh, now I'm going to present another strategic option, which is the partnership with the fitness chain, FFL. There are several pros and cons I want to discuss. First, uh, understanding the pros. The costs will be shared with FFL who create, for example, the rental space, and there will be the leasehold improvement financing provided by FFL. There will be an access to the existing health conscious customer base that currently RSI doesn't have. This creates the training opportunities for the employees at RSI to train their massage therapists at FFL. This also will provide diversity to RSI's operations and probably will create more profit for it. 
on the uh, negative side of things, there will be no brand promotion uh, promotion for RSI at all through M the massage centers because they will be located at FFL facilities. The massage center operations uh, will largely depend on FFL's customer traffic and the amount of customers that are attending FFL facilities. There will be additional expenses incurred to set up the partnership in terms of in the incorporation that is currently RSI. And then there will be a due diligence cost involved in assessing the numbers provided by FFL. Uh, now we're going to talk about profitability. So the first, uh, in the first year, this project will require the investments from both partners of about $210,000. Then uh, this will provide a profit of around $840,000, which is three times the investment. Uh, it will require eight franchises to cover the startup costs, and it will require five franchises to break even. And at the end, we have calculated that approximately $50,000 will be required from the financing to be provided by RSI for these investment operations. Another strategic option is the acquisition of Pure Substance Inc. is that is currently providing the spa products to RSI. Uh, on the positive side of things, there will be a potential reduction of the cost from the vertical integration of operations. There will also be the brand promotion. Uh, for RSI because it will be providing organic products in the spa. There will also be an expansion into the larger retail facilities who are currently buying the products from the pure. And finally, uh, RSI will have the opportunity to promote environmental conscious business through pure. There is a negative side of things as well. RSI has no experience in manufacturing at all, so there could be some losses from the lack of expertise. So there is currently pressure on pure prices because of the foreign competition. There will be also uh, cost to produce, uh, the cost to produce are currently decreasing, increasing, so this will diminish the net margin that is currently experienced by RSI. And there are also ethical problems because the owner of pure uh, has promised their employees that uh, the operations will be kept in Canada, but it will be more profitable to move the operations overseas. So here you can see that the current revenues of Pure are increasing as well as the cost of sales, so the net, to net profit is decreasing from 2013 to 2014, and this is due, uh, mar marginally due to the uh, significant shipping costs. Thank you. Now I will uh, pass it over to Martina. Based on the four strategic options that we have identified, we came up with decision criteria to decide on which recommendations we should make um, for RSI. Our first recommendation is to consolidate the support functions of RSI and Lavish, and by that we mean consolidating the accounting, um, admin, IT, and banking, but maintaining the two brands separate. Our second recommendation is to pursue the partnership with FFL and rebrand MTCs under the RSI brand. And our third recommendation is to franchise RSIs after one year pending the success of the FFL partnership. Uh, we came up with a forecast on the funds that will be needed for these recommendations. In year one, $210,000 will be required, and in year two, $200,000 will be required. Uh, funds should be acquired from Blair Cummings, who will um, set less strict covenants than the banks, uh, and then shareholders will be able to receive funds annually. Lastly, Blair's financial background can be leveraged by RSI if he chooses to become a shareholder. To deal with some of the operational issues that we have identified, we recommend amending the vision and mission statements, um, clarifying the government structures under the combined entities, um, and management should focus on oversight. And we also recommend implementing balanced scorecards and standard employee bonus plans. And lastly, we recommend um, having one IT system for both Lavish and FFL. Thank you for listening to our presentation, and we hope to advise you again.